Hi, welcome to the Whitey White Guy Show. I'm Whitey, and today I'm going to review the film The Ninth Gate, which was directed by Roman Polanski. It stars Johnny Depp, James Russo, Frank Ligella, and a bunch of other people I've never heard of. Um, and it's a, a really interesting film. I'm a big fan of this movie. I saw it way, way back. I've been watching it many, many times since. And for this video, I was looking up, and apparently this isn't um, a popular film. It, there was a lot of negativity in the by the film critics and its rating and stuff. I think this is an excellent film. And uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review it here. But Johnny Depp uh, plays a... Well, he gets referred to as a book detective. It's his job to find rare books, authenticate rare books, um, sell rare, rare... All things rare books. You know, very old, hundred-year-old books. Um, and um, he's a goes to see a guy named Bulkin played by Frank Lagella, who is some rich guy. There's a, a sign in front of his business is Bulkin Press. He's so he's like a multimillionaire with a bunch of money. Um, and you get the sense he comes from, from money. And he's got a, a book collection and like a skyscraper in one of the top floors uh, that all, is very rare and expensive books with that all the same protagonist, which is the devil. And so there's... Uh, a book called the uh, is it, it the ninth gate or the nine gates of Masterford, yeah. and um, he hires Frank, Frank Lagella, the bulk guy Balkan, hires Dean Corso, which is Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp, to authenticate this book that is supposed to was written by Erdesita Tor, Erdesita Torquia, who was burned alive during the Spanish Inquisition because he wrote a book in collaboration with the devil himself. And so the Ninth Gate, according to Balkan, Frank Lagella's character, um, there's like a mystery to it. And if you have the right information, you can conjure the devil and the devil will give you immortality or something. It's never really made 100% clear. Um, and so Johnny Depp, this is in New York. Johnny Depp has to go to Europe because of Spain and uh, where's Portugal. And he, there's three books. So when Aristide Torquia was captured by the Spanish Inquisition, he and all his books were burned except for the three that, uh, survived. And so rich people own these three books. Balkan just, there's a guy named Telfer who in the opening scene commits suicide. Spoilers. And um, Bulkin just bought the book for him the day before he commits suicide. Something ain't working with the book. It's supposed to conjure the devil. It's not conjuring the devil. So Johnny Depp has to go to Europe, to Spain and Portugal, to find the other two owners of the other two books and examine their books. And Bulkin wants to know if his book is... He, Bulkin believes that the other the two of the books are forgeries and one's authentic. And he wants Johnny Depp effectively to find the one that's authentic and then get it by any means necessary. Um, so Johnny Depp is given the book to take with him to Europe and investigate the other two books. While this is happening, um, there's this blonde lady, this attractive blonde lady who was very mysterious. And at one point, Johnny Depp's in a library and... Um, he looks up and without his glasses on, he's always wearing glasses and very fuzzily sees her standing there and he puts his glasses on. He looks back up and she's gone. Stuff like that. Very, she's there and then she's not. And everywhere he goes, you know, she's sitting in the background kind of thing and he doesn't know who she is. And then there's um, the guy Telfer was married to a lady named Liana. I think I'm saying that right. Who is a, um, a hua. And... As you're going along, you find out she's part of this witch's coven and had her rich husband Telfer buy the book for her. At first, Johnny Depp thought it was, she said it was his obsession. It turns out it's hers. And she's trying to get the book back from Johnny Depp. And, and so uh, James Russo plays Johnny Depp's only friend in the film that you, closest thing to a friend he's got he's Johnny Depp there's a piece of dialogue by Frank Lagella he's very much a loner um you know he's obsessed with books very not quite nerdy but just kind of centrally focused on on books he's a bibliophile loves books and uh James Russo is the one guy who he's buddies with but 
um, they screw people over. They, you know, assess the books way too high and then they buy the books and stuff like that. They got a con job going on kind of thing. He ends up getting killed. That is the Bernie character, James Russo. Um, and then other people end up dying and everywhere Johnny Depp goes, death follows. And so there's two different sides. There's Bulkin and Leanna Telfer lady. Um, and they're trying to get their hands on these two books from the, uh, the people who own them, who wouldn't part with them for anything. Um, and as you go along, you're finding out more details about the book, more gets revealed. So at one point, uh, Johnny Depp meets with, uh, the guy, Victor Fargus, who owns one of the other copies. And as he's flipping through the books, he notices that in the pictures, in the engravings, um, there's a guy holding keys, and in this book, he's holding keys in his left hand, and in this book, he's holding the keys in his right hand. So Johnny Depp comes to believe that the Aristide Torquia, who wrote a book in collaboration with the devil, hid the secret of the Nine Gates, not in one book, but in three. And so you need all three, you need engravings from all three to conjure the devil and gain immortality or something. They never really spell this stuff out, um, even the very ending of the film. But it's a, uh, a suspenseful whodunit with some really good writing, really good acting. Roman play, it's a good-looking film. There's, you know, it's the late 90s, so there's some fire effects and stuff that's like, uh, I don't, I remember watching it not thinking anything about it, but looking back, you know, that don't look too great, but 99% of this film looks fine. It's a good looking film. Nothing flashy, nothing fantastic, not a lot of effects. It's a very practical based film, but uh, it's directed well in terms of, you know, letting the actors give a good performance and framing, lighting, all that stuff that helps bring out a performance. Roman Polanski knows his job and um, it's not star studded. There's, if you know who Frank Lagella is, He's in it. And you know who Johnny Depp is. He's in it. But really, it's the Johnny Depp show. Uh, but everybody is in, in the cast. I'm a big James Russo fan. Glad to see him getting work. Johnny Depp does an excellent job with this film. And um, it's uh, kind of hard to review it too much without getting into the ending. But I'll just try to expound on a little bit. One really interesting theme in this in this film that never, never, they never established why we're doing this. Is that this book is, I believe it's supposed to be by 1999, it's 600 years old. There's only three of them in the world. Um, you know, the, it's a book based on a book written by the devil and all this stuff. And yet, the way the book is handled is just so bizarre. So, Johnny Depp is supposed to be this bibliophile, he loves rare books. And he treats it like a ham sandwich. <laughs> You're just like, what are you doing? So when he first brings this book home, he pops it on his desk and then lights up a cigarette. And I'm like, that's such a rare book. I wouldn't smoke a cigarette within 10 feet of that thing. Now, I don't know much about books. I own a handful. I think somewhere. <laughs> I got a couple books about Custer. It's about it. I've never been a big book guy. So maybe he knows something I don't know. But I'm watching that going, like, what are you doing? And then at one point, he's coming home with some groceries, and it's raining, and he's got a satchel he's always got with him. Very um, Jack Sparrow. He's always got his accoutrement, his effects. He's always got the same jacket and the same glasses and the same satchel bag. And so he takes like a cloth, wraps the book in a cloth, puts it in a satchel bag. And at one point he's coming home in the rain with a bag of groceries. And I'm like, you let it, like, unless that satchel bag has got supernatural powers, like that book, that 600 year, ring, year old, really incredibly rare book is getting wet, dude. What are you doing? And then, he, and then at one point he goes, it's actually, all those scenes are really good, but it's just one of the particularly good scenes. They had the same guy play twins, and he's two older dudes, say, in their 60s. And this, is, I believe it was in Portugal, and they were the one of the previous owners prior to Telford. And uh, the guys, he's like, Johnny Depp goes, I'd like, you know, 
what can you tell me about this book? And the guy opens up and he's sitting there smoking and he ashes all over it. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you guys doing? And then they laugh about it. Like the other brother, twin brother laughs about it. He's like, we're, we were going to get him a book binder. And I'm like, <laughs> it's just, it's so, it, but it had to be a little nudged, uh, a little, um, you know, a little wink to the audience, like, we're going to mess with you. This is such an incredibly rare book. And at one point, he's a library, and he sees the pretty lady. Um, so he goes around the corner and leaves the books in there. And, like, somebody could have snagged that, dude. That thing's got to be worth a fortune. And they never give you specifics as to, you know, how much is it worth. But everything about it screams, this is worth six figures. You know, tens of thousands of dollars on the low end, probably more than that. And he just leaves it there, unguarded, for even for a moment. It's like, dude, I would not. I'd have that, that thing like a, a newborn baby. So, uh, but it's, um, you really just kind of got to see his film. And I, that's an extreme compliment because nowadays, and, and it's been this way for the most part, Hollywood is this way. You got the same themes over and over and over again. And nothing really innovative, nothing really creative going on lately in the last 20 something years. The nineties were awesome looking back. And this is an example of that because I don't know of another film like this. Now it's got some similar themes in that it, uh, a bit of suspense, a bit of mystery, all that stuff. But what's the other movie about a bibliophile tracking down rare books? And it's interesting. I thought it was, I thought it's a, again, a really good film, thoroughly entertained. But this is a film where you have to enjoy good performances, good directing, and intrigue. You know, the, what's going what's gonna to happen next? Who's What's this person over here all about and the mystery behind that? Um, and just it, good, depthful entertainment. This isn't Michael Bay. This isn't Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber. These are the adults talking about adult things, not adult things. But, you know, mature, intelligent writing and without getting too serious. Like it, the film can't take itself too seriously. It finds that perfect tonal middle ground where it has a little bit of fun with him, itself and keeps the film entertaining, you know, for a movie where a guy's sitting around in a library at times. Um, but, man, I just I enjoy the living crap out of The Ninth Gate. I uh, thought it was... A lot of fun as a film, and um, it, yeah, I don't know how much I could tell you, but uh, without giving stuff away if you haven't seen the film. So I should do a spoilers, a review of spoilers, but if you haven't seen The Ninth Gate and you're watching this, like, go check it out. You know, if you're over the age of, say, 12, you know, 13, 14 years old, you know, 9 and 10 is too boring, but... Uh, if you're a mature, intelligent person, go check out this film because I thought they did a really good job with it and I think you'll enjoy it a lot. If you're Eric over at Hey Internet Eric here, you're not going to give a shit because this isn't two sweaty guys body slamming each other. Um, that's his thing, I guess. This isn't Freddy Krueger ripping somebody open. This is, you know, you have to enjoy good acting. And, um, one of the other things, too, there's these interesting themes throughout the film where the first guy you run into who's the, a book owner of his books, his name is Fargus. His family's lost its fortune. His house is basically empty. He's got his last full handful of, of books um, out of what was apparently a, an impressive collection by book collector standards. And, um, you know, and he's hobbled around. He's got a bum hip and stuff. And then the nice lady... Um, is this wealthy baroness with this amazing immaculate conception, uh, conception collection, and it's very impressive and also so there's interesting themes, delving into the world of bibliophiles. This one guy's hobbled up and barely can move, and then there's the um, the baroness who's got a wealthy fortune and everything else, um, and then there's a weird thing. I, I if I if they answered it, I missed it. She's in a wheelchair. And with the, you know, one of those electronic ones you can roll around in. And she's missing her arm from the elbow up and her right leg, part of her right leg is gone. And I don't know if that was supposed to be diabetes. and But she says, you know, she saw the devil once in person when she was a little girl. And 
Is this supposed to be a byproduct of it? Now, the whole film is based on a book. Um, and this, so again, this is the film ad adaptation, obviously. So I don't know, does that co get covered in the book? Is that covered in a deleted scene? Why she has no arm? Or is that just the actress? Is that actress really missing an arm and a leg, Mr. McCraig? So there's a lot of interesting little themes. And uh, on the so it's this really intelligent, well-written movie. And at the same time, it's like, simple enough so you can understand what's going on they didn't get too high concept to not think their audience um so yeah i really like the ninth gate go check this out um the ending is very ambiguous um with except you i'll just spoil with that johnny depp is the only guy who lives <laughs> basically everybody else is done for so um go check it out go check out the ninth gate I enjoyed it a lot, and uh, thank you for watching this. If you enjoyed the video, like, share, subscribe, um, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.